and okay. Yep, sorry about that. No worries, no worries. Um, I will be flitting from the screen as it is now down to feet to make things a little bit easier. Uh, and I do encourage you to do, I'm going to go through steps nice and slowly. And what I intend to do today is I intend to show you figures that are used in all of the classical sequence dancers. Because if you can do uh, a pas de basque, you can do lots of glides, you can do lots of two steps, and even some classical sequence waltzes. If you can do a, a, a waltz turn, that it comes into all of the turned out feet dancers. So that's what I, what I tried to do today. Before we carry on, I'm going to talk you through the five feet positions. And the way I'm going to do this is how I teach it to tiny tots, all right? So you'll have to excuse my little rhyme, but it really does work to help, okay? So can you all see my feet? Hopefully, yes. Right, when we do a classical sequence, our feet are turned out at a 45 degree angle. And I always say that it's a little bit like a duck. All right, so the rhyme I have for the turned out feet positions is as follows. The first little duck said, look at me, my heels are together now, can't you see? The second little duck said, step to the side. Not forward, not back, and not too wide. The third little duck said heel to the middle. Turn out your toes and do not fiddle. The fourth little duck said look at me. I can stretch my toes and point you see. The fifth little duck said heel to toe. Now we know our positions, so off we go. All right, a silly little rhyme, but it's very, very helpful remembering where those feet should be. The main foot positions we use are third position and fifth position. We use them in most figures throughout classical sequence. Now when we dance classical sequence, we do dance the turned out feet positions in what we call an open hold. And when we're in, a, in the open hold, I'll just talk you through this. Firstly, as gent, normally the man would stand with the left foot in third position front. That means the left foot will be pointing straight down the line of dance and the right foot will be pointing towards the wall. When he takes hold of his lady, I always imagine the whole for, um, for, for, for open position, if Four people stood in a circle and joined fingertips to make a circular action. So the arms aren't straight, the arms aren't behind the body, they're in a gentle curve around. Now the man will turn his palm uppermost, so his palm will be facing up towards the ceiling. He then takes the left hand, keeping the curve, down and places his hand on the hip where the hand naturally falls. So I wouldn't want you to take the hand down or to take the hand up. It's just literally when you bend the elbow, where that hand falls, that is where the man places his hand. His fingers are in the front of his body and his thumb is to the back. And his fingers are pointed nice and straight, forming a little diagonal line downward, okay? I don't know if you, can you see the entire body? Can you see my head as well? When we're in that position, the man will turn his head slightly to the left. The lady, her open position, is the right foot in front, in third position front, and her right foot is pointing the line of dance, and her left foot is pointing towards the center. Exactly the same with the curves in the arms, but the lady's left hand will be palm down and the right hand will be taking hold of her skirt, still with the curve. Ideally, the arms, I'm gonna let go of my skirt because it's not quite long enough. The arms would still maintain that curved position. So the dress would need to be held at the same height as the left hand. And again, in that position, the lady's headline would be up 
and out towards the right side. So both partners' heads are going actually away from each other. Okay. Now, when we're going to, I'm going to start with a couple of the very, very popular moves that we do in classical sequence. And the first one I'm going to do is the part of ask. All right. This, this comes in so many different dances. Now I'm going to go down towards my feet so you get a better, a better shot. Okay. Now we start in third position. At the moment, I've got the right foot in front, but a part of ask is danced on both feet. So it wouldn't matter which foot you started with. Men usually do it starting left foot, but not necessarily, and ladies right. Now, when we do a part de basque, we want to take the front foot to a pointed position in the front of you, all right? Now, I'm going to just walk the feet through first before I pop the rise and fall in here. I'm now going to circle the right foot to the side into that second position that we talked about. So the heels are level and the toes are level, but the toes are still at that 45 degree angle. We're then going to, and this is the best way I te to teach this, I'm going to then bring the left heel, not the toe, the left heel into fifth position. So the toes are turned out, the heel of the left foot is now touching the toe of the right foot. From there, we lift the right heel, the right foot actually, off the floor and point the toe down towards the floor and then we lower it again. So that's the right foot part of us. From there, we would take the left foot forward to a point, circle it to the side into second position, bring the heel of the right foot to touch the toe of the left foot, lift the left foot from the floor and drop back down again. And it's very, very important that once you go up, as you come down, you're in exactly the same position. So the fifth position is there when you go up and the fifth position is there when you come down. Now that does have some rise involved in it. So what we have to do as the right foot is going forward, we're actually going to go up onto the toe of the left foot. So we go up, we circle and we land on two toes and then lower that heel of the right foot and the knee flexors, all right? We bring the left foot in with heel first. We rise up onto two toes, lift the right heel, uh, right toe off the floor and point it downwards and then lower toe heel. So we go up, toe down. Up, toe down, up, toe down, and up, toe down. Okay? So that's the part of us. And as I said, that comes in many, many different times. We're now going to do a step called a part de vaults. Now, the part de vaults, again, this comes in a lot of the uh, waltzers, the sequence waltzers. It comes in several dancers throughout. Now, when we do a part de vaults, we start in the third position. Sorry, I'm a bit too far away there. We start in third position, which again means we've got one toe point in line of dance, and we've got one point, foot point in the center. We're gonna take a step forward down the line of dance, straight forward with the right foot. As we step forward with the right foot, we're going to lose some turnout on the back foot. The left foot is then going to carry through. It's going to pass the other foot. It's going to go straight forward down the line of dance on a toe. And then as we bring the right foot in, we're going to turn the right foot out to a 90 degree angle again. And we're going to close it in third position at the back. We then repeat that, or can repeat that with the left foot. So the left foot steps forward down the line of dance. The right foot loses its turnout and it passes through parallel position and straight forward down the line of dance. We're then going to, on a toe, the toe, we then turn the back foot out and we close the back foot. 
foot into third position and we call that third position rear because it's closing at the back. Okay, now it can be danced um, always with rise, always with rise and it's a lot nicer if we do a bend and then we rise and as we lower we bend again. Okay, and that gives it a nice soft, ac soft action just like you would in a normal ballroom walk. Okay, can somebody give me the thumbs up? Is the angle that I'm at okay for everybody? Is it working? Yes, good. Right, the next major step, and this is a lot more difficult, the next major step we do is the, the waltz turn. And as I said, the waltz turn appears in all of the classical sequence turned out feet dancers. So if you're doing a tango or a saunter, you wouldn't have to, uh, classical waltz that any of the other rhythms you would do the classical waltz. I'm going to start with the natural waltz turns because you can do waltz turns turn into the right and turn into the left, just like you can uh, a right turn in a ballroom waltz or a left turn in a ballroom waltz is called a natural and reverse. That's exactly the same in the classical sequence waltz. Again, we're going to start in our third position, but this sometimes starts in fifth, depending on which dance you're doing and where it's coming from. The first step is going to step forward down the line of dance. And again, as we step forward, we lose the turnout of the back foot. We're then going to pass the feet through parallel position. As the left foot goes forward on a toe, unlike the uh, pas de balls, the left foot is now going to go towards the corner. So it would be diagonal to the wall. Okay, we're now on two toes. We turn on the left, on both toes actually, but the left foot, and then we draw the right toe in to fifth position and soften the knee. All right, so we're now in a nice fifth position. Just move back a little bit. From there, we're going to use the inside edge of the big toe, all right? And we're gonna take the foot on a diagonal type action. The body hasn't yet turned. As I stand on this left foot, I'm going to allow my body to turn. It should now be facing, the body should be facing down to wall against line of dance. And as I turn, I'm going to turn to face against the line of dance. Notice I've still got my toes turned out to each corner. Okay, I'm going to then bring the right foot back, bending the knee and placing the right foot in a fifth position at the back. Okay, the knee turned out to the knee pointing towards the center of the room. I'm then going to rise up, pressing firmly into the floor, rise up on two toes, and then I'm going to do a turn to end in fifth position front. Now, I always say to pupils on that little bit, when we actually get to that fifth position, bend the knee, press the toe deep into the floor, rise up, and you want to feel the feet go through every position to get to fifth. So you're actually going from fifth at the back, to third, to first, to third, to fifth. Okay? So each position, you hit along the way, one, two, three. You then step forward with the right foot and repeat the whole thing. Okay, so I'll do that a little bit quicker, just so that I'm not all wobbly. So it's a bit wobbly, wobbly then. Okay, so I'm gonna step forward down the line of down one, past the feet, two toes to the corner, two. So my toes, my belly button, my nose, everything's pointing to the corner at this point, okay? I'm then going to turn, I'm going to go to fifth and soften the knee. Reach across, and I always tell people this is to make a space because the other partner is coming straight forward. They're doing the forward arc of the turn now, and they're going forward between my feet. I allow the body to turn, still with a toe to each corner, Touch fifth 
position rear with the knee turned out, right onto two toes and twiddle. Okay, now that is exactly the same if we're doing a reverse waltz turn. And sometimes uh, the lady might be doing a natural waltz turn solo, and sometimes the man might be doing a reverse turn at the same time. Okay, I will talk you through that in a minute. But the reverse turn works exactly the same. Left foot forward down the line of dance, allow the foot to lose its turn out, past the feet, this time both toes to diag center, turn on the right foot and bring the left foot in, this and bend the knee. Whoops, a bit. Use the inside edge of the big toe to reach across before we do any body turn. Then we allow the body to turn as we stand into that foot, but we still have our feet turned out to each corner. Place the foot to fifth position rear with the knee pointing wall, rise and turn. Okay, so there we have the natural waltz turn and the reverse waltz turn. If you are dancing that with a partner, you will use that foot pattern. If you dance it solo, it slightly changes. Not the progressive arc, not the forward arc. The forward arc is called progressive and the backward arc is called the rotary arc. The progressive arc remains the same, but if you're going to dance it solo, when you do the backward arc of the turn, you go straight back down the line of dance with the toe turned out. Then we touch exactly the same, rise and twiddle. So it's only the fact that we don't reach across, and you can see why you wouldn't reach across, because if the man went across to the left and the lady went across to the right, you would separate and not be able to, to dance together at the end of it. So if you dance in solo waltz, then you would dance straight back down the line of dance with your toe turned out. Now, before I carry on, does anyone have any questions that you'd like to ask on the figures that I've just covered? Anybody? Or is everybody okay with that? Yeah, everybody's good. I like it, I like it. Right, so the next figure we're going to do is called a pas de vault, uh, sorry, pas de gavotte. We've done the pas de vault, the pas de gavotte. Now this is obviously the name says it all, this occurs in the gavots. Now gavots are a dancer such as the Wedgwood Blue Gavot or the La Mascot. Um, and again, we're going through the turned out feet positions. So we start in our third position. We're going to flex both the knees. We lift, we peel the front foot up to a toe and we push the front foot forward with the toe straight down the line of dance, straightening the leg. As we put the heel down, the knee will bend and we peel the back foot off the floor and close the back foot still turned out to third position rear. We bend the knees. Again, this step can be danced with or without turn, but mainly with an eighth of a turn on it. We lift the front foot off the floor we take the foot down the line of dance and as we take it down the line of dance, we take the pressure from the big toe to the little toe, which allows the foot to make an eighth of a turn. We flex into the knee. We draw the back foot now through first position. My body is now facing the line of dance. So I've got a toe to each corner, one diag wall, one diag center, body is facing the line of dance. The left foot then carries on going forward through and it lifts to that fourth position front, but it's actually off the floor. So it's fourth position, low area. So I'll just dance that again a little bit quicker. So we dance, peel and push the foot down the line of dance, lift the back foot in, lift, push and turn the foot out. Bring the back foot through that first position and lift. And usually when we dance a pas de gavot, I didn't talk about the head in the other figures actually, but when we dance a pas de gavot, 
we would have the headline out towards our diagonal and we would dance one, two, turn the foot out, three, the arm would gently move forward because the body's turned and the head would look over the leg that's lifted. So if we did a left foot pas de gavotte, we would do one, two, three, and the head will look over to the right. Okay, so whichever foot is off the floor, the headline would turn and look over that foot. I'm just going to skip back a little bit because I didn't mention the headline on the pas de basque. If we're dancing a pas de basque with the right foot, we would dance the pas de basque circle and we would turn the head the opposite way to the pas de basque. And left two. And if we went to the left, the head would turn to the right. So we would circle to the left and to the right. Usually if we're dancing, I'm going to skip again to the pas de balls where I, I missed the headline there. When we dance the part of balls, our headline would be out towards its natural corner. So if I was the man, it would be out to the diag centre as laid diag wall. My head is going to stay exactly where it is in relation to this right hand. So when I dance the part of balls, I would dance one, two, and three. So it actually looks as if I've turned the head backwards. But if I just put my body back where it was, the head is still in the same place. Okay, so I'll just do that again. So we're out to the corner and the head is going to stay over the left hand. So if, even if I was on my hip, it would stay over the hand that's on the hip. So we'll do one, two, 